Hello, this is Mark Hubbs with Ariscon Bullet Molds. For years I've heard people tell me that the little Colt Model 1849 pocket revolver is no, no better than a 22 as far as self-defense. And I've always wondered why Colt could sell a quarter million of these and have so many clones and competitors in the same caliber for that to be true. So I decided to take uh, the little pocket revolver to the range and see how it would do with the chronograph and also a penetration test using water jugs. And we'll be shooting the little Aeris Gone 31 caliber Baby Dragoon conical bullet, an 80 grain bullet uh, that Colt, uh, Sam Colt himself designed for this revolver uh, when we're doing these tests. So stick with us. As I mentioned before, the bullet we'll be using is the Aris Gone 31 caliber Baby Dragoon bullet. And this is the bullet that Sam Coat designed for this revolver in the late 1840s and was used all through the 1850s and into the early 1860s. The little brass molds he sold with revolvers cast this bullet, and he also used this bullet in his prepared cartridges that were made by the Colt Cartridge Works. My load with this bullet will be 12 grains of 4F Go X powder. Now, I know some of you are going to say, oh, 4F is only for flintlocks, but that's not true. It works great for small bore revolvers. I had no cap chance during the whole range uh, session, and I think the uh, uh, modifications I made to the revolver paid off. I'll put a link to the video on what I did to it at the end of this one. My loading lever is still coming down during recoil, though. I'm going to have to do some more work on it to prevent that. You'll see a failure to fire here, and that's because I had one cap that was not seated as far down as it should have been. I had to go around the cylinder and re-snap it. It went off with the second round. Other than that, the, uh, the gun performed great the whole afternoon. This is the first time I used my Caldwell chronograph and it performed excellently. I'm really glad I bought this thing. My old crony chronograph would not work with black powder weapons for some reason. And here are the surprising results. The little gun actually outperforms the two cartridges that replaced it later in the 19th century, the 32 Smith & Wesson and the 32 Long, significantly above the 32 Smith & Wesson. My average results of 143 foot-pounds placed the little gun right in the same realm as the 32 ACP, which we all know was one of the most common pocket pistol rounds up through the late 20th century. So let's see how it does in penetration. I'll be shooting one gallon water jugs lined up on the table, hoping to keep them all in a straight line in those jugs. Let's, let's see how I do. Entry and in and out. I thought it had passed through only two jugs and then veered off, but after I started looking around, I realized it passed through two more that were on the end of the table, outside of the straight line. Okay, at first we thought these only went through two, but actually went through four. Split the first one, it went through and then passed to the left, but I happened to have two other bottles sitting there and it went through two more. So there, entry and exit. And then my fourth one entered here and out there and then went off into the woods. So we had a complete pass through on, on four jugs. Uh, we're gonna, we'll try one more and see if, uh, 
if we have any better luck. This is at 240 frames per second and then slowed down to 10% of that. Keep your eye on the area between the fifth and sixth jugs. Did you see it? Let's slow it down and home in on that area. You can clearly see the bullet path through the first five jugs and then the bullet bounces off the sixth jug and goes in the air a few inches and then falls back down to the table where I found it laying later. Quite impressive. My 36 caliber test, the bullet went through five jugs and was captured within the sixth jug, so not much more penetration, even with the larger caliber. Two, three, four, five. And there's the bullet. Five shots, five, five jugs. Here's the recovered bullet. Uh, you can see great rifling engraving, the full length. So I know that uh, the bore and chamber size are well matched for this little birdie. So I guess this experiment tells us that the little gun is not nearly as puny as some people would have us to believe especially considering that this technology is over 170 years old and it actually outperforms some later calibers, 32 Smith & Wesson and 32 Long, that replaced it later in the 19th century. I hope this was interesting to you. Uh, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. I'll post links at the end of this video to a couple others that I did on the 49 Pocket model and I hope you'll come back and see us again sometime.